Hello, in this video I will explain how to solve the inverse kinematic problem of serial robot manipulators using Coppelia Sim and specifically the Sim IK plugin. In this first video I am going to explain how to configure an inverse kinematic environment from a scene objects. In the next video I will explain how to manually create all these elements and to solve the inverse kinematic problem as well, but uh, using advanced functions. The aims of the presentation are to explain how to use the SimIK plugin to solve the inverse kinematic problem. I will explain how to create an environment with all the elements that the plugin needs from scene objects. We will see a couple of algorithms to solve the inverse kinematics and what kind of constraints uh, we can include on it. Finally, we will see how to solve the inverse kinematic problem and how to apply the calculated values to joint positions to actually achieve a pose. To end this presentation I will show some examples. The SIMIK plugin can solve the inverse kinematic of multiple serial robot manipulators. So in this regard it has its own environment that works independently of Coppelius Sim scene objects. This means that we need to replicate the robot configuration we have in a scene to be able to control a specific robot. And we can also solve the inverse kinematic problem without affecting objects in the scene, but this is something, as I said, we will see in the next video. We can create several environments to be able to uh, have multiple computations running independently. Um, this is like having uh, several open sessions uh, in the plugin uh, where we can perform uh, independent computations. On each of the environments we can create inverse kinematic groups consisting of a set of elements and these elements must have a hierarchy like a serial robot manipulator. In particular we need a dummy at the robot base, a set of joints representing the robot and a dummy of the tip of the robot that will be linked to another dummy that represents the target position to be reached. It is therefore important to remark that IK elements of the plugin are different from scene objects of Copilisim. So, in this video, as I said before, I will focus on how to solve the image kinematic problem from uh, objects that we have in the scene. So, in this case, I have created a uh, uh, a dummy at the tip of the robot, another one at the tip of, or sorry, at the base uh, of the robot with the hierarchy or the hierarchical relationship as shown in the figure on the left. And in addition to this we need to create also a target dummy that will be used to determine the position and orientation that we intend to reach. The dummies you can see here are actually uh, based on the previous example that we saw in a previous video about forward kinematics. The base dummy it's named O0, the tip dummy it's named O7 and the target dummy it's named target. This is a new dummy. Okay? And all these dummies are actually objects in the Coppelius Sim scene. To work with the Coppelius uh, Sim, uh, sorry, uh, see, Coppelius Sim uh, IK plugin we need to create a number of objects starting with the IK environment. As I said, it's some kind of uh, internal session that will allow us to configure all the remaining elements that we need to solve the problem. In the code I show here, I have created three variables, two of them to define the base and the tip of the robot from the reference frame dummies that we have in our scene, and a third variable to define the target dummy. These variables correspond to actual objects, as I said, in Copilesim scene. Next, we create the IK environment that, or using the, the SimIK create environment function and store the result in the IKM variable that will be used in all plugin function calls as we will see later. Then we need to add a series of groups uh, to the environment. A group includes uh, calculation parameters uh, that are used to solve the inverse kinematic problem. There are actually two different algorithms implemented in the plugin, the pseudo-inverse of the robot Jacobian or the dumped least squares method or DLS. 
Both algorithms are iterative algorithms and specifically the DLS algorithm also needs to provide a damping factor as a parameter to smooth the progression of the algorithm. I, I have uh, indicated here uh, each of the parameters what they mean. Well, uh, I have created in particular here two IK groups to solve the problem with both algorithms and this is, as we will see, just in case one of them fails we can use always try to solve it with the other algorithm. We need to add the elements to each of IK groups and for that we use the SIMIK add AK elements from SIN. This is a function that will include all the SIN objects from the base to the tip uh, as part of the uh, elements of the AK environment. It also needs the target dummy and what kind of constraint we impose to our problem. In particular here I have used a post constraint but we will see that there might be several options to solve uh, uh, the problem and that will imply some kind of relaxation. So actually here we see all three different examples uh, to solve the inverse kinematic problem with different constraint requirements. So the CMIK constraint pose imposes the constraints on both, on position and orientation. In other words, it's a six-dimensional task in which the plugin must try to find a solution so that the point reaches, or the, the tip reaches the target, uh, satisfying those six variables. We could solve the problem only considering, for instance, position variables. In this case, the task would have a three-dimensional space which means that the problem has been somehow relaxed and thus additional solutions are valid now. We can also require constraints for instance on the alpha, beta or even the gamma angle. As you can see from these three examples, the position of the tip and the target, all of them they, they match, but depending on the additional constraints we impose, the orientation that the tip of the robot uh, reaches is different. Uh, in particular, for instance, uh, if we impose position, then the orientation doesn't mean I could any, any orientation would be a valid solution. And if we impose, for instance, in this case, the alpha-beta uh, constraint, that implies that our z-axis must be aligned. Yeah, and this, uh, this is something, for instance, uh, could be relevant, for instance, for a drilling operation where the orientation of the z-axis is not important but the direction it is important. So once we have created all elements in the AK environment we can solve the inverse kinematic problem by using the SIMIK apply AK environment to a scene function. This function allows to directly move the robot if a solution is found. It is well known that finding a feasible solution is not always warranted. Imagine the case where we request to reach a position that is outside the robot workspace. Sometimes the pseudo inverse algorithm finds more uh, finds more difficult to find the solution, but is faster to compute. And for that reason, we try to solve first the problem with using this pseudo inverse uh, approach. And then, in case it's, it fails, then we try to solve it with the DLS algorithm. And just in case both fail, then in, in that case we show uh, a dialog to the user indicating that the, the inverse kinematic is failing. Well, now let's see some examples to see how the, pr uh, the plugin solves the problem. I have prepared actually a set of examples where I have fixed the target dummy uh, to a given position and orientation and we have generated a smooth trajectory from the tip to the target using an interpolated or interpolation between the positions and orientations. At each of the trajectory points we solve the inverse kinematic problem and move the robot to the requested pose. In this first video, we will see how we can successfully uh, solve the problem by moving the robot with a smooth trajectory from the start position to the target position. As you can see, the robot is moving and it's reaching exactly the target position that we requested. Now, in the second video, we're going to see how the robot manages to solve the problem at the same pose, but during the interpolated uh, movement, there are poses that the robot cannot reach. 
You will see how it stretches trying to reach the target with the proper orientation. And then at the end of the trajectory, it does manage to reach the position and orientation again because the actual uh, pose we are demanding, it's, uh, it's within the workspace of the robot. As you can see, somehow the robot is trying to reach a uh, position and orientation that it's outside the scope of or outside the workspace of the robot and the plugin it's not able to solve it. But then later we can recover the inverse schematic. And in the third video we will see how the solution found represents a non-physical physically possible uh, movement. The reason is because when generating this video joints were not limited on purpose and thus the plugin considers joint angles that should not be valid indeed. If we want to avoid this kind of problems we need to proper set the joint limits using the, uh, the, the joint, uh, joint properties. Obviously this will reduce the set of possible solutions but at least the ones you find will be feasible solutions. So let's see how it works in the, or how it fails actually. You can see that the robot is moving and it's flipping this link here providing an impossible movement. We could solve this by limiting or uh, specifying a proper uh, configuring the, uh, these uh, values here, the minimum position and the, the range of the, the link. Well, in this presentation I have explained how to solve the inverse kinematic of serial robot manipulators using CMAK plugin in Coppelia Sim. Thank you very much.